Welcome 3D students. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a neon sign like this one. And after we create it and set it up in 3D Max, we're going to import it into Unreal so that you can create a scene like this. So let's get started. So here's the scene that I created and if you look at it you can see that I have an object that is in front of a plane with a texture on it and I have three lights here. Now these lights are what are called mesh lights. Each light is bound to a part of the mesh that uh, runs the mesh as a light. So the mesh puts out the light, not the light itself. And if you look at each one of these lights, you can see that each one has a color corresponding to the different colors of the light. If we look at the materials for the scene, each piece of the sign has a material on it, but the material is basically white. And that's how we achieve that neon sign look. If I bring up an earlier version of the file, you can see that each piece of the sign is basically a separate line. And I'll show you how to do that later. But we have to break it up into pieces like this so that it looks, you know, together, ironically. And in the background here is a picture of a neon sign. That looks like this. I also have a color version of the image that I could attach so you can see what that looks like. I made it black and white so that it would be easier for me to look at while I was using it as a reference. So the first thing you're going to need is a reference image. Now I searched for retro neon sign here and you can find all sorts of different images. Uh, I'm going to require that you have at least two colors in your sign. So uh, you should pick one with at least two colors. Uh, three would be even better. You could pick something like this if you want. Although this one has something behind it that gives it the uh, complete look. It has an actual picture of a Coke bottle. Um, this one would be pretty complicated. This one is pretty cool. Just pick something that is meaningful to you, except something that has to do with alcohol or anything like that. If you're interested in something specific, you could change your search to include something you're interested in, like donuts, for example, or maybe even gas stations, or whatever, or maybe even something like automotive brands or cars or motorcycles or anything else that interests you. If you're interested in music or certain brands of musical instruments like uh, say Fender guitars you can find something like that. I'm going to go ahead and save this image and show you how to convert a WebP or other type of file uh, that you can't use in 3D Max in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and save this image and you'll see that it is coming in as a WebP file. You can't use a WebP file in 3D Max, so you have to convert it. But I'm also not going to want to look at this very, very bright uh, image while I'm trying to trace it. So I'm going to open it up in Photoshop anyway. So once you've found your image, open up Photoshop, and then click Open, and find the image that you want to use. I'm going to open this one uh, and show you what to do using this one since it's one of those WebP files. I think I might open this one too. So once you have it, open it up. And here I have both of them open. This one is the WebP. So what you're going to want to do to these images is desaturate them. So to do that, you go to Image, Adjustments, and you find Saturation. And that brings up this little dialog. And then you simply drag the saturation button down, and now it's in black and white. Now to use it, and I'll show you on this one as well. Oops, wrong, wrong slider. And then you can simply export it back out. File, export as, and you're going to choose JPEG is fine, PNG is fine, GIF is fine too and just click export. 
Now you're going to want to export this to your project folder inside the scene assets images folder. And let's do this one as well. Again, that's file, export, export as, and PNG or JPEG, doesn't matter and put it inside the scene assets images folder of your project folder. You can just close it. You don't need to save this at all. Now, once you have done that, then you can set up your uh, scene. Now I'm going to show you how to do this using this scene or this sign. So what you do is I'm going to go ahead and hide this plane and hide everything else here. We'll bring it back later when we go to talk about it. All right, so what you're going to want to do is create a reference image plane. You go to the Create tab and create a plane. And then you go to your Material Editor and you drag out a physical material, just like this. And then you drag off the base color node, like so. General Bitmap, and you find the image you want to use. This is the one I was going to use, so you click it and you click OK. And now it's connected. I also imported the color one because I wanted to see what colors I needed to use. So to do that, I just right clicked and selected Maps, General, Bitmap, and I brought the color one in as well because I'm going to want to remember what colors each piece is. Then you simply apply that to your reference plane. Now you need to make sure that it's not distorted so you click the bitmap and then you look down here in the settings and you find view image. Click that and then it brings up the texture you're using for the material. If you right click on it it brings up these statistics and you can clearly see here that the width and the height are the same at 1024. So I'm going to make sure that my plane is square. It doesn't need to be 1024, but it needs to be square. Now I can close the material editor. Now before I use this, I need to do a couple of things. I need to switch to the top viewport and move it back away from the origin line here. And I also need to center it by right clicking on the X coordinates and zeroing that out. Then I need to switch back to the front viewport. And I turned off the grid by pushing G on the keyboard. So turn off the grid. And then we need to right click on the, on the plane, bring up object properties, and uncheck show frozen in gray and click OK. Then you can freeze it in the scene explorer so you don't accidentally move it. And you're now ready to begin creating your neon sign. Make sure that you create a new project folder by going to File, Create Default, and create a project folder in your right location. Just click New Folder and click Select Folder after you've named it. And then go ahead and save this scene inside your new project folder. Now we've done this a number of times, so I'm not going to show you exactly how to do that again. You should know how to do it by now. So when we come back, I'll talk to you about how to actually create the neon sign objects. And I'll see you then.